Welcome to the Connected Mom Podcast, where we have real conversations helping you to connect more deeply with God, more empathically with your fellow moms, and more intentionally with your child. I'm Becky Harling, your host, and I have with me today my amazing co-host, Sarah. So Sarah, welcome, and I have a question for you since you are right in the thick of raising your two kids. Do you journal? Great question. Pre-kids, yes. Post-kids, no. That's the honest (laughs) truth. (laughs) Well, I I love love journaling. I used to love it. And no, I in nine years I probably have not really journaled much at all. So there's the there's the honesty. Well, that's fine. So today our guest. I'm so excited about this guest. So we have Jennifer Dukes Lee with us and she is a farm girl actually living in Iowa. She's raised two girls. She's now an empty nester, but she's written one of the most creative books, Sarah, that I have ever encountered. It's called Stuff I'd Only Tell God. I love the title. I love the way she set it up. I love the questions in here. I mean, Girls, you should listen in, lean in and listen, because this is going to be an amazing interview. She's a best-selling author, and this book is incredible. It's a guided journal to help you know yourself better and to help you know God better. And I mean, what could be better than that? So welcome, Jennifer. Well, thank you for the warm welcome. This is great. And Sarah, I'm telling you, by the end of this podcast, we are going to get you back into journaling. That's that's my prediction. I'm excited. <laughs> she's 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 gonna bring it, Sarah, and you'll be ready. So I am. okay, Jennifer, before we dive in too deeply, what gave you the vision for this book? It's so creative. It is. It's unlike anything I've ever written before, most of, well, everything I've written before is either a trade book or a Bible study. And for those who don't know what a trade book is, it's like a regular book that has chapters and maybe like 55,000 words, right? So the difference is this is a guided journey that is in in some ways, the book is only about 20% complete because it's not a real book until you finish it, until you Mm -hmm. answer the thousands of prompts in it and make a really exciting discovery. I thought of this idea um, several years ago when it occurred to me how much I, A, loved questioning people, (laughs) not Uh to be nosy, but because I'm genuinely curious, and number two, how questions literally saved my life. Because Ooh. I was an agnostic uh, in my huh. early adulthood, even though I grew up in the faith and felt uh, over the years that there wasn't proof that satisfied me intellectually about mm. Jesus. And it was mm. a very dark time in my life. And I would Google things on the internet, like, you know, how to try to figure out what what was real. And everything that I read was like, well, just go read the Bible. And I'm like, well, yeah, you're going to say that. That's like your propaganda piece. But (laughs) it turns out when I began to interrogate the Bible, and I really interrogated it, and when I really asked God some deep, hard questions, over about a four-year period, I became a believing Jesus following sold out person for God. I was, it it was life changing. And it's because I finally stopped running away from my doubts and my questions. And Mm. that is the path that led me straight to Jesus. So I've got all of this behind me of um, questions leading to self discovery and questions leading to God discovery. Mm. And I wanted to put all of that together in a book. But as I began, I'm like, I also want to have a lot of fun with this thing because I think that as Christians, we just don't have enough fun. We just take ourselves far too seriously. Yes, that (laughs) is true. Yeah, but God, you know, God gave us a sense of humor. He himself, I really strongly believe, has a terrific sense of humor, sharp Mm -hmm. wit, 
uh, funny, you know, I mean, there's just funny stories in the Bible that, that make me smile and make me laugh. And so this journal is really a journey through your life. It goes through your people, your past, your present, uh, you in, engage with your own longings and dreams and, and look forward to the future. And my hope is that by the time people get to the last page in that journal, they will really have set in their mind how they want to live the rest of their lives and what's going to be most important. Mm, wow. I love that so much. Well, I'm going to read this because I love the description of your book. Your new book invites people into courageous honesty, obsessive truth-telling, and beautifully ruthless self-discovery. Wow. So why are all of those so important? I, I think you've shared why it, it really helped you with your faith discovery, but why is honesty, truth-telling, self-discovery so important for us? Yes, honesty, and not only honesty, but courageous honesty, right? Because being honest does take courage. It takes courage to be honest with ourselves about our past. It takes courage mm -hmm. to be honest with the things that have hurt and the people who have hurt us. It takes courage to be honest about uh, the people that we are having a hard time forgiving. It takes mm. courage to... Um, tell God, I'm not sure what I believe about these particular things in my life. I'm not sure what I believe about you. Help me. That takes courage to come to before, before God like that. And truth telling in an obsessive nature, obsessive truth telling is even more than just regular truth telling. It's like, I am going to do this thing and mm -hmm. I am really going to dig in. I'm going to give it 100%. I'm not going to just, you know, maybe skip questions or um, not come face to face with my truth. I, I, I just want to dig in and be all there and present for this journey. And then the reason I call it not just self-discovery, but beautifully ruthless self-discovery mm -hmm. is because, again, that goes even deeper than self-discovery. Because honestly, finding out things about yourself can be ruthless. Um, mm -hmm. It can be difficult. It can be hard to come face to face. And I, I don't want to like sugarcoat that at all for people who might dig into this journal. But the reason it is beautifully ruthless is because as you come out of that fully into who God made you to be, that is the most beautiful kind of self-discovery at all. So I just mm -hmm. had a lot of fun with some mm -hmm. extra qualifiers and just really wanted to encourage people to give it their all and be wholly passionate in this process. It It is such a fun book. And um, so I've been thinking about, you know, the moms that are listening and something that I have heard over and over through the years is, you know, a lot of moms uh, invest in their kids and that becomes really their whole identity while they're raising their kids. And then the kids move out and a lot of moms come to me at that point and they say, I don't know who I am anymore because I was a mom, you know? And one of the things that I love about this book is you're encouraging them to know who they are. And how have you experienced that in your own life, Jennifer? I mean, you just shared with us a couple of minutes ago that you're an empty nester now, mm -hmm. you know, and there is an adjustment there, but there are some dangers if you don't really know who you are beyond motherhood, right? Absolutely. And I get how easy it is to wrap our identities around our motherhood. I decided when the kids were quite young that I was not going to do that. I didn't want to wrap my identity around them. I didn't want to wrap our marriage around them mm -hmm. because I knew that they weren't always going to be here. And in fact, I told uh, you both, Sarah and Becky, before we went online with this podcast that our emptiness went really empty and they flew far away. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, I, I, you know, there's been a couple of <laughs> times where I've looked to Scott and said, it's a really good thing we like each other. It's a really yeah. good thing we like we like each other. <laughs> and also, it's a really good thing that we like us, like yourself. It's a really good thing mm. that you um, take some time to appreciate how God made you and what his purposes are for you as a human being who loves God. I, I am not convinced, uh, and maybe this is an unpopular thing to say on a mom podcast, but I am not convinced that motherhood is our highest calling. I'm just not. I am yeah. convinced that glorifying God is our highest calling. 
And that means being mm-hmm. a great mother. That also be means being the, the fullness of who God created us to be with our hobbies and our interests and maybe vocationally where we volunteer, uh, how we pay the bills, um, what we appreciate uh, and uh, our friendships and the foods that we make. I mean, there's so many things that God mm-hmm. gave us to enjoy, to enjoy him and to enjoy this earth and this world that he created. So my hope is to help a woman understand cover that as she goes through this process. Cool. Yeah, I I really love that answer, Jennifer. You know, I was talking with some people close to me uh, a few weeks ago, actually, and they were talking about, you know, there's a lot of guilt when you're a mom and you work outside the home or you work in the home and you're trying to manage kids and your career and the things that you want to do. And, you know, as I was thinking about it, I thought, you know, I'm really glad because it would have been easy for me as a mom. I loved being a mom. I still love being a mom. And now I love being a grandmother, but it would have been easy for me to wrap my whole life around the kids. But God called me also to be a Bible teacher. Mm -hmm. And I'm thankful he did because I think otherwise I would have been too tangled up in my kids, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I love that you talk about how our highest calling is really to glorify God and not Mm -hmm. just to raise these humans. The humans are wonderful to raise, Mm -hmm. you know, and there's so much joy in that. But beyond that, we're called to be followers of Jesus who know our gifts, who appreciate how God has designed us and who are joining Jesus in his mission in the world. So thank Thank you for that answer. I I really love that. Mm -hmm. My joy. And I'm glad, Becky, that you have glorified God with your work outside of the home. I mean, it's made a difference for so many people. Um, I know because I work for the publishing house uh, where some of your books have been published. So I'm really grateful for you and for anybody who's listening right now to know that your other work matters. You know, if you're a working mom or a volunteering mom, whatever that looks like, if you're a ministry mom, I know, I remember how you can feel so guilty about doing some of those things. Like you're just not a good mom, but you are a good human and you're also modeling what it looks like to glorify God with the other areas of your life, whatever that is for you. Mm, I love that. Good encouragement. Back to journaling for mm-hmm. a second, because you know, you, <laughs> y'all are convinced that you're going to convince me to be a journaler again. So um, I've heard about this kind of idea with prayer, but you know, we know that God knows all things. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes it can be hard when we already think God knows these things, right? Like, oh, he already knows what I need. Or, or, But how does writing our thoughts down help? Why is journaling, the act of journaling, so important? That's a great question. And I'm going to piggyback off of it as, as it is relationally to God. Because I think for those of us with a Christian worldview, as we journal, We aren't just looking at the words as us talking back to ourselves. We can't help but journal and see it as really a conversation with God. So I think you're right. It is like prayer. Uh, Mm -hmm. And it is also true, Sarah, that God absolutely knows our thoughts. He knows them before the word is even on our tongue. He knows our thoughts and the ways that we take and all of those things. In a in a an analogy for you, my husband Scott, who I've been married to for twenty seven years, knows me very very well. And when he comes in at the end of the day from the pig barns, he's a farmer. When he comes in at the end of the day, he can tell by my body language and by the look on my face if I've had a good day, or if I've had a stressful day, if I'm carrying a burden, or if I'm lighthearted and ready for a fun night together. And I don't have to say a word. He knows. But what kind of relationship would we have if I just let him read the physical cues and the body language and never had a conversation with him? Mm-hmm. It wouldn't be, it would be a very one way. It wouldn't, we, there would be no growth. There would be no intimacy. And he obviously can't know my thoughts in the same way that God can. But it's also true that God desires us to be more than, you know, give, you know, giving off our body language to him. Like he wants Mm -hmm. to hear from us in order to 
become intimate in any kind of relationship, uh, we have to push pause and spend some time in conversation. And so that's part of the reason why journaling is, is so good, because it really is a conversation with God about the deep things in your life, about the silly things in your life, not only about what you need, but about what brings you joy and what causes you worry and all those things. And is very, very therapeutic. Uh, mm-hmm. Counselors and therapists of all stripes of all religious stripes or of no religious stripes would agree that therapy is good or that that uh, journaling is therapeutic and i think also sarah in that regard we see it modeled so beautifully in the bible when i read the psalms i feel like mm-hmm. i just read david's journal that i just read his diary and now those words, they didn't only serve him and, and the immediate audience, but here they are thousands of years later, his journal entries helping mm. us in some of our biggest trials. Mm. So true. I love that. And, you know, Jennifer, I think as people are listening to us, they're probably thinking, oh, well, I could just go buy a journal, you know, for $4.99 at Target or whatever, you know, so they're probably imagining this journal that you've written as just a book with a lot of lines, but it's so much more than that. It's so creative. So one of my favorite things that you did is called Lost in Translation. Mm -hmm. So tell us about that section of the journal and what that looks like. Absolutely. And to piggyback off of that comment, Becky, it's so good. I think it's important that people realize this isn't uh, just a bunch of blank pages. There are literally thousands of prompts. And the reason Mm. I did it that way is because sometimes when I have a $4.99 blank journal from Target, I get writer's block when I start to try. I'm like, I don't know what to say today. And I'm a writer. Like, that's what I do for a career. So even more so, what about the non-journaler or the non-writer? So they're going to have that too. I love that you asked about the Lost in Translation section. I had had so much fun with this. Um, So a long time ago, when I was a little girl, we had a Portuguese exchange student. She was from Brazil. And she taught uh, me a word as she was leaving um, on her last days at home. She taught me the word saudade. And saudade is a longing or a nostalgia Mm -hmm. for somebody who is absent. And she told me that when she went back to Brazil, she was going to have saudade for me, that she was going to Mm -hmm. miss me terribly. And I remembered that word all of my growing up years because it was, I had saudade for this big sister who moved back to Brazil. And as I got older, I thought, how interesting is it that there's no good English translation for that word, saudade? There's not like a one succinct word. When I created the journal, I thought, what would it be like to see what other words are like that out there? Surely there's more than just saudade. And in fact, there were dozens. And I sprinkle these kinds of words throughout the journal. There, There are many different words. And I just picked some of my favorites, but there just isn't a perfect, succinct, English word sometimes for what we feel. So I listed the word, the language that it came from. I give the definition and then I give you an opportunity to think about, oh yeah, I've experienced this before. I've experienced saudade. I've experienced mm-hmm. ya'a berne in Arabic. I've experienced peña ajena in Spanish. And I apologize for the Spanish speaking or the Arabic pe- <laughs> speaking people who are listening right now, because I know how to spell them, but I don't know how to pronounce you them. You did pretty good with the <laughs> Arabic one. My husband and I lived in an Arabic country for a couple of years. So you did great with it. Yeah, well, but I love even... that part of the journal. And oh, there's good. other fun prompts too. I mean, like me and my places, my best places. You have a whole list. My mm. best bookstore, my best park, my best local lunch joint. I mean, these are just fun they questions are. to help you know yourself better. So for you, Jennifer, what was your favorite question you asked in the book? You know, Do you have a favorite 
Yeah, there's some that are our favorite from a funny angle, and then there's mm-hmm. some that are favorite from a more serious angle that are really like deeply helpful. So I'll start with yeah. I'll start with that one first. My my favorite one that I think is perhaps the most one of the most important in the journal is there's a four page section um, called a genogram. It says let's make a genogram. Yes, I yeah. love that you it's included intense. it. <laughs> and a, a genogram is like a psychological family tree, and you diagram the oh. history of behaviors mm-hmm. and personalities mm-hmm. and tendencies of your grandparents, aunts, uncles, great grandparents, mm-hmm. and so on. And you look for repetition in behaviors and personalities. And then, you know, like who was maybe unfaithful, uh, where are we seeing a line of, you know, undiagnosed depression or anger and also who was particularly faithful to God, who had a rich prayer life, who was exceptionally kind. And at the end of that, you look for the trends and the tendencies and you decide what do I want to carry forward and what cycles stop with me? It's, it's a way of identifying, you know, as Christian. As Christians, we call it strongholds. It's a way of identifying strongholds and um, taking them before the Lord and saying, this ends with me. And yeah. this is what I want to be moving forward. Like, I want to be like Grandma Margaret Taylor. She was amazing, exceptionally kind, always generous. That's the kind of woman that I want to be from here on mm-hmm. out. So it was really helpful for me. As far as a as a silly one, um, and it's one that I've asked for years that will um, basically turn into all night dance parties when I'm with friends or family. And here it nice. is. Nice. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I'm all about the dance party. All right. right. As long as you got an Alexa, I hope mine doesn't go off because I just now said that. <laughs> but if you got an Alexa and you've got this question, you are going to have fun all night long if you're with with a group of like six people. So here it okay. is. Um, there on page 129, I have a section called my light motif and a light motif. And again, I hope I'm saying this right. You guys, I apologize, but it's a short it's musical phrase. Okay. So a light motif is a short musical phrase and it accompanies the appearance of like a figure or a person in entertainment. So Jaws, the shark in Jaws, he has his own shark music yes, to signal his appearance or, mm-hmm. you know, like there's certain opera singers that, and baseball players that have their walk up song. So mm-hmm. from now until the day you die, if the same song came on every time you walked into the room, what song would you want it to be? And oh. I, have, it is such a fun conversation starter. It's I remember so doing this with my mom and dad and uh, my, uh, my mom and dad were in walkers and we were up at their cabin in Northern Minnesota and mom did her song, Orange Colored Sky, and she com- she actually wanted to walk into the room to it, right? And so she's she's on her walker, and she's pushing her walker into the room on Orange Colored Sky, and dad took his turn. And then, of course, we're like, but you know what? Maybe it's this song. So that is so fun. So do you got one coming to mind, Sarah, Becky? What, what immediate song comes to mind? Do you have a leitmotif? We will, we will rock them. <laughs> yes. Becky, you go, girl. Wow coming in strong yeah and that's the first song that came well, see, it, it, it's it is just it, it's meant for you it's, i mean it just made its way fun. Wow. Yeah. fun yeah no i Nobody's actually can think of some yeah no i'm like wow <laughs> you probably should that... have given a worship song or something but anyway no, go ahead mine isn't Sarah. either <laughs> it's all good no i actually don't have mine that's something i'm gonna have to but my my dad loved classic rock i grew up in a wonderful christian home with classic rock that's how it was nice and he loved Bob Seger, old time rock and roll. And you know, at the beginning, it's like piano, dun, 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 dun. Like if I hear the beginning bars, that's dad, like always. Oh, so I love that. And he would that's love that. So cool. He would be so fine with that. So that's yeah, so I can cool. think of it for other people. So I'm going to have to reflect on my own. Yeah, because yeah. I would say, oh, maybe it's a worship song, Becky, but probably not. Yeah, I'm too well, shallow. I mean, Mine's like a just... 90s song. <laughs> Yeah. Well, what's well, yours, Amy Jennifer? Well, and I wonder what it is. I wonder when that song did come out. I should like quick look that up. But it's it's a song from um, Tub Thumping or Chumbawamba. Do you know this one? Uh uh-uh. uh Okay. Never heard of I it. I know you would know it. I, it says like I get knocked down, but I get up again. Oh, you're never get gonna back keep up. Me down. Oh yeah. Knock, yeah, knock, yeah, knock yeah. Down. Nice. It's so you guys fun. are hip, man. You're <laughs> yeah, like it was, it's a 1997 song. It just makes okay. me want. It just makes me want to move. Yeah. You see now, it's like you know, one. we're together on a. Imagine it. We're together on a Saturday night with our friends or spouses or whatever. Wouldn't we have fun with that? 
Yes. That is so yeah. fun. Great. <laughs> we are getting together with my family, my extended family this week. And that is what I'm going to bring up, Jennifer, because they will love it. They love music. And this is going to be so fun. Yeah. And I will have yeah. to think of my, but I'm going to oh, get a head start because I got to think of mine. Yeah. Okay, you yeah. got to think of yours. So my daughter is a voice teacher, you know, and um, she probably has a Disney song in her head that would be hers. But this is a great question that you can definitely use oh at gosh. parties and Absolutely. all of those things. I yeah. love it. It is such a creative question. Yeah. I, I love the whole book. So, I mean, it is so fun, girls. You need to get this book. So, Sarah, did you have another question? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, yeah. Well, first of all, I'm going to put in my cart on Amazon right now because... Well, see, look. Oh, Steve. good. Okay. Legit <laughs> putting it in, add to cart. Stuff I'd only tell nice. God. I love it so How much. can you do that while we're on together? Uh, I'm so screen, intrigued. Becky. Two screens. Oh, two screens. Two screens. You know? that, is, that is impressive. There's yeah. my walk-up song. Two screens. But, yes. Um... um <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I'm gonna make up a song. No, okay, but I was thinking, Jennifer, um, is it could it be used to connect with other moms? Like, could you grab them with another friend? Like, what kind of other ways have you seen this journal used to connect Which with so yourself, wild. God, people? Yeah, I mean, that's so wild to me, Sarah, because literally when I wrote this, I in my mind, I imagined a woman sitting down. And doing this on her own and then like hiding it in the best hiding place that she could possibly find and then making sure that her best best friend knows that she needs to burn it if she dies, right? Oh my gosh. What it's turned out to be is people gave this to um, their high school grads. Like they, oh. they, this was like their go-to gift. People were buying them by like the... Does like a dozen of them and giving them to all the grads that they could think of. I um, love I know that. A guy, oh my gosh, what a great idea! Uh, yeah, and they were like clipping little. Um, I, I showed them how to do it in a reel, oh. but like you can clip uh, on the favorite coffee shop page. You can clip a Starbucks card um, oh. on the Money Matters section. They were, you know, I showed them how to clip. Uh, ten dollar bills or whatever. I mean you could just make it be whatever you want or stick little post it notes with advice. So there's like kids doing it. There's moms doing it with their kids. I mean you can't do all of these with your kids. There's some of it is just too heavy. But that there's plenty of um questions like people are using them on their summer road trips right now. Like just oh, kind of to pass great the time. Idea. Yeah. yeah. I mean that's like so the, you mentioned places a little bit ago. Uh Becky, you know, the best places, like, you, can you imagine how fun that would be to ask, like, your teenage daughter, yes. the, what's your favorite place to, you know, get a good bargain, or or your yeah. six-year-old son, like, honey, what's your best thinking spot, or your yeah. husband, what's your favorite mm. local lunch joint? They're just fun questions. Yeah. Um, but men, too, uh, a man in eastern Iowa bought them for 10 people at a homeless shelter, I mean, oh, that's it, great. Yeah, it, it's it's men, it's women, it's couples, it's it's uh, moms with their kids, it's dating couples, it's girls groups together. So it, it's whatever you want it to be. Like I said earlier, I wrote the thing, but it's like 20 percent complete because the, the really good stuff happens when you fill it out and when and, and potentially when you do it with other people. Well, that's what I love about it because it's not like you have to sit down and do this book in one sitting. I mean, you won't be able to, but you could take different pieces, like if you're on a road trip and ask your kids some of those questions, you know, mm -hmm. or you cool. could have your kids describe some of those foreign words and how, mm -hmm. what they would, what they would identify with that. I mean, there's so many ways to use this book. I, I'm envisioning, you know, girlfriend gatherings where moms get together and they pull out this book and they ask each other, you know, because a lot of times I think we don't take the time to really get to know people as well as we could. So the book can be used to get to know yourself better, but mm -hmm. it can also be used to get to know other people better. So you recommend in the book, Jennifer, sharing your secrets with one other person besides God. Mm. Now... Why? Mm. That might feel a little scary to some of our listeners. Like, oh, there's some secrets I'll never share with anybody. Why do you recommend that? Yeah, you know, after they've come that far, I, I wanted to issue a challenge to take it one step further because, um, and now I'm seeing people just do that straight out of the gate. <laughs> but at the very okay. end of the book, I said, you might you might not want to share it with anybody, but um, I, I encourage you to think about sharing it with other people because 
uh, we all know that, you know, for instance, when there's a group of moms together and somebody says, you know, this is something I really, I'm really struggling with right now. Everybody else around the table is like, oh, me too. I thought I was the only yeah. one that felt that way. So um, it, it creates a uh, bond and connection and intimacy, not only with God, but with other people. Uh, I've, I've even seen that with just sharing some of my answers with my husband. You know, mm-hmm. like I was asking him some, some of the questions. I'm like, man, honey, I never knew that about you. I never knew that, that's yeah. what, you know, that you thought that about that particular thing. So um, not every question might lend itself to that, but certainly my encouragement is to take it the next level and um, it will create a stronger bonds with the people you love. Yeah, I love that, you know, because uh, as you probably know, the Surgeon General came out with a report um, maybe a month ago now about how loneliness is on the rise in our country and that it's the new pandemic. And I think a lot of times people are hiding maybe behind their computer screens or social media or whatever. So we're getting a fake view of each other rather than really understanding each other. And these questions are so fabulous to include in your next party, dinner party, or conversation, or coffee date with your girlfriend, or even when you're having a play date with your kids, Mm -hmm. you know, rather than scrolling Instagram, talk to your friends about some of these questions and really seek Mm -hmm. to get to know them because every person is this beautiful creation of Mm -hmm. God and they're filled with so much life and so many amazing stories that maybe you could never even imagine. So I really want to encourage you to get this book. Be like Sarah who just put it in her Amazon cart. (laughs) So where can our listeners go, Jennifer, if they want to stay in touch with you? Because I'm sure they've all fallen in love with you now and they're all going to want to be besties with you. So how can they connect with you? I am Jennifer Dukes Lee everywhere online, whether that's TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. That's my okay, website. Wait, you're on TikTok? I'm on TikTok. I'm so impressed. Wow. <laughs> I did not know that about you. So are you doing the dance that goes with your walk-in music? I have a reel with my walk-in music. Oh, okay. You're going to have to share that with us. I am going to share that with you. In fact, I have one with, here's, I've got two versions of it, Becky and Sarah, because one of them is just me coming into my um, Chumbawamba song. But then a podcaster that I was with said, how about we each come into our, our song and then we'll mash it up together in one reel. Wow. So I don't know. I mean, That's I'm just saying, amazing. so, you know, I'm just, I'm just suggesting Becky that you, you know, come in you with, we will, we in. will rock them. <laughs> I, I think it's a great idea. <laughs> oh, and then one, one other place that I, I wanted to tell you about this place. Cause we kind of got off track again. Uh, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> We're having stuff. fun. <laughs> on Instagram, I'm also at Stuff I'd Only Tell God. I have a new mm-hmm. account. And on there, I share a lot from the journal. And we have a fun little community going where we share our answers to some of these questions. I love that. And I I, I mean, this was such a fun interview, Jennifer. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, Sarah and I might just need to come visit you on the farm. And uh yeah, and and see your dance moves. That would be just amazing. And then where can they get the book if they want to? I mean, obviously, Sarah modeled for us that you can get yes. it on Amazon, which yes. you got to love Amazon because they'll deliver it to your door tomorrow. But That's right. uh, beside that, where else can you get it? You know, um, if there's a 30% off always at bakerbookhouse.com. Okay. Wow. So, yeah. And Becky. Who knew? I your, don't even know that. And I'm your one books. of their authors. <laughs> your books, I almost guarantee you, are right now 30% off on Baker okay. Bookhouse. Because you wow. are Bethany. Yeah. yeah. Go check wow. it out. Okay. I will. I and did I not love, know that. I love sharing Baker Bookhouse because the physical store is incredible. If you've ever been yes, to it. In the the Grand physical Rapids. store is. Yeah. The online store is great too. They, they pack that stuff up and send it out right away. 
It's good. Yeah, they they are amazing. They um, I did a book signing there, and then I did something else through them. But they they have in the back of the store too used mm. books, and I just Ooh. love that bookstore. It's incredible. So, mm -hmm. but that's good for me to know because my books are there, and I didn't even know that, Jennifer. So I've learned so much from you today. I've learned what your favorite song is. I've learned about your dance moves. I learned that your kids are off in two different countries right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, this has been so much fun. We need each other, girls, as friends, mm -hmm. and we need to connect. Mm -hmm. And this book by Jennifer is so amazing because it's going to help you connect with yourself more in intentionally, but it's mm -hmm. also a great tool to help you to connect with God, your friends, and your kids. Because like mm -hmm. Jennifer suggested, there's a lot of questions in the book you could use with your teens or your grade school kids to find out more about them so that they feel more connected to you. Hey, Jennifer, would you close us out with prayer and just pray for our listeners? Absolutely. That'd be my joy. Dear God, thank you so much for this great conversation with these two amazing sisters in Christ. And we thank you also for all of the people out there that we can't see right now, but we feel their presence with us in a way because of you and your Holy Spirit connecting all of us. So thank you for that. Thank you for the technology that allows that. I pray right now, especially for any mom listening right now who just feels overwhelmed who the last thing on her mind is journaling. And I get that, Lord. I've been right there. Just come close to her and um, comfort her and encourage her in the way that only you can do. And finally, Lord, the Lord bless you and keep you. Mother, on the other end of this conversation, the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hey, friends, thanks for joining us today for this episode of The Connected Mom. And we are hoping that you're going to join us again next week, where we'll have another conversation helping you to connect more deeply with God, more empathically with your fellow moms, and more intentionally with your child. Mm -hmm.